Hello everyone, what's up? Welcome back to my YouTube channel, Clinical Cases Simplified. So today I'm here with another set of flashcards on antiviral drugs. This is a video on demand. You can also comment and tell me what topics would you like to be covered in the flashcards and I'll try to make a video on that. So by now I hope you have revised the previous flashcards and if you are doing so then great job. You are on the way to create a long lasting memory. In case you haven't checked out the previous videos, please go to my channel to find out more. Before beginning, let's talk about viruses in general. Let's understand the basis or basics of how a virus enters a cell, replicates in the host cell and then releases its progeny. So the very first step is attachment. The virus attaches itself to any cell by the help of a receptor present on the cell. Then the virus is phagocytosed inside the cell and then vi uh, virus releases its content from the phagosome and replication, nucleic acid synthesis, protein synthesis, everything takes place and finally our vi virion is assembled and released from the host cell. So, we have various drugs acting at different steps of this process in order to terminate it. For example, we can block the replication of the virus by inhibiting the nucleus, uh, nucleic acid synthesis. We have guanosine analogs, viral DNA polymerase inhibitors, guanine nucleotide synthesis inhibitors, adenosine analogs, and endonuclease inhibitors. And for Preventing the release of progeny virus, we have neuraminidase inhibitors like oseltamivir and zenamivir. Okay, now here is a high yield table containing important viruses and their receptors. Cytomegalovirus attaches to integrins, Epstein Barr virus attaches to CD1, human immunodeficiency virus attaches to CD4 or CXCR5 or CCR5 receptors on the cell. Parvovirus B19 infects RBCs, hence it attaches to the P antigen on the RBCs. Rabies virus attaches to the nicotinic acetylcholine receptors and rhinovirus attaches to the ICAM1 receptors. Alright, so moving on to our flashcards. The instructions are the same. On one side of the flashcard, you will see the name of an antiviral drug and on the other side, you will see its mechanism of action and clinical use and adverse effects and mechanism of resistance if in case they are important and high yield. Please pause the video first in each flashcard and try to answer by yourself before I reveal the other side of the flashcard. Then, when you are done with the flashcards in the video, Revise them at intervals I have mentioned in the description. So here is a first flashcard. We have oseltamivir and zenamivir. Do you know its mechanism of action and um, clinical use? It inhibits influenza neuraminidase as we have discussed earlier, hence decreasing the release of progeny virus. Um, it is used in the treatment and prevention of influenza A and B and it is used for shortening the duration of illness if you begin the therapy within 48 hours of onset of symptoms. Moving on to our next card. Veloxavir. Do you know its mechanism of action and clinical use? It inhibits endonuclease activity of influenza virus RNA polymerase, hence decreasing the viral replication. And its use is to shorten the duration of illness when given within 48 hours of symptom onset. Next flashcard, Remdesivir. Now, this is a commonly known drug, but do you know its mechanism of action and use? So, it basically is a prodrug of an ATP analog. The active metabolite inhibits viral RNA dependent RNA polymerase and evades proofreading by viral exoribonuclease. 
hence decreasing the viral RNA production. It was recently approved for the treatment of COVID-19 patients requiring hospitalization. Moving on to our next flashcard. Acyclovir, Femicyclovir and Velocyclovir. Do you know about its mechanism of action, clinical use and adverse effects? Now these three drugs are guanosine analogs. They are monophosphorylated by herpes simplex virus and varicella zoster virus, thymidine kinase and not phosphorylated in uninfected cell. Now that's an important point because it is only activated in the infected cells. So it has fewer adverse effects. Now its triphosphate is formed by cellular enzymes and it preferentially inhibits the viral DNA polymerase by chain termination. So what could be the clinical use? Obviously, the, it, ha, uh, it is used against, uh, it is used in treatment of herpes simplex virus and varicella zoster virus infection, though it also has a weak activity against Epstein-Barr virus and it has no activity against cytomegalovirus. It is used for herpes simplex virus induced mucocutaneous and genital lesions as well as for encephalitis. Also used in prophylaxis in patients who are immunocompromised. But it has no effect on latent forms of HSV and BZV. Now the second drug Velocyclovir, it is the pro-drug of acyclovir that has better oral bioavailability. And Femicyclovir is used for the treatment of herpes zoster. Now the adverse effects are important and high yield so I mentioned them here. It causes obstructive crystalline nephropathy and acute kin kidney injury if the patient is not adequately hydrated. Now resistance against this drug is developed because of the production of mutated viral thymidine kinase that was responsible for activation. Moving on to our next fl flashcard, Ganycyclovir. The mechanism is the same. It is a guanosine analog like acyclovir and its 5' monophosphate is formed by a CMV, cytomegalovirus viral kinase and triphosphate is formed by cellular kinases as we have seen before and it preferentially inhibits viral DNA polymerase. Now its clinical use is in cytomegalovirus. Now acyclovir, valcyclovir and uh, other drugs we have discussed earlier cannot be used in CMV infections. Now this drug is used in CMV infections especially in patients who are immunocompromised and valgancyclovir is a product of gancyclovir and has a better oral bioavailability. Now, its adverse effects are bone marrow suppression and renal toxicity. Bone marrow suppression leads to leukopenia, neutropenia and thrombocytopenia and it is more toxic to the host enzymes than acyclovir. The mutation uh, mechanism of resistance is again the same that the production of mutated viral kinase. Next drug, Foscarnet. Do you know about, about its mechanism of action and clinical use and adverse effect? Now this Foscarnet is viral DNA or RNA polymerase inhibitor and HIV reverse transcriptase inhibitor. It binds to pyrophosphate binding site of the enzyme. Unlike the previous drug, it does not require any kinase activation. It is also used in CMV retinitis in immunocompromised patients when ganycyclovir fails and in acyclovir resistant herpes simplex virus infections. Now the important inverse effects are nephrotoxicity, electrolyte abnormalities like hypo or hypercalcemia, hypo or hyperphosphatemia, hypokalemia and hypomagnesemia and it can also lead to seizures. Now, the resistance against this drug is developed because of the production of mutated DNA polymerase. Now, the last drug for the day is Cidofovir. 
It preferentially inhibits viral DNA polymerase. It does not require phosphorylation by viral kinase. Its clinical use is CMV retinitis in immunocompromised patients and acyclovir resistant HSV, same as phoscarnet, but it has a longer half life. Its adverse effects are nephrotoxicity, so we co administer it with probenicid and IV saline to decrease the toxicity. Alright, that's all folks. Thank you so much for watching this video till the end. Make sure that you hit the subscribe button for more such content. See you soon.